Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm so excited to share the four different types of requirements as defined by BABOK. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with BABOK, it actually stands for Business Analysis Body of Knowledge. So basically it's a framework that you can use in order for you to facilitate or to help your understanding throughout business analysis phase of an implementation or a project. So as you're aware, these requirements are typically conducted at the beginning stage of a project or an initiative. So these different types of requirements need to be captured and documented throughout your business analysis stage in order to really ensure that you're actually solving the problem that is stated by the business or your customer. So I'm very excited to share today's video because I have an awesome diagram that's going to show the different types of requirements and what they're used for and some of the examples as well. So I'm not just going to talk about what those four requirements are, but I'm going to also talk about what are some of the real examples and how they're defined in BABOK as well. So if this is something that you want to find out more, then just keep on watching. I mentioned before, there are four main different types of requirements, starting with business requirements, stakeholder requirements, solution requirements, and transition requirements. However, in this diagram, there's two more requirements, and those two requirements are called functional requirements and non-functional requirements. The reason why I didn't mention these two requirements before is because they are actually subcategories under solution requirements. So when we talk about solution requirements, we actually talk about both functional and non-functional requirements that make up the solution requirements. And as you can see from the top, we start off with business requirements, which is more at the high level. And then as we go down towards the bottom, where functional, non-functional, and transition requirements are, these are very specific requirements. So we start from top, very high level, and then we work our way down. So when we do our analysis, we normally start off with business requirements, and then we move into stakeholder solution, and then into transition requirements. So now let's take a look at the diagram. Essentially, the definition of business requirements is statement of goals, objectives, and outcomes that describe why a change has been initiated. This can apply to a high-level enterprise, or it could be a specific business area, or a project or initiative basis. Business requirements are typically high-level business goals and objectives, as I mentioned before. So an example can be such as, we would like to automate our vendor management system so that we can streamline end-to-end -end processes so that the vendor lead time is reduced by 50% in the next 12 months. So next, next one is stakeholder requirements. As you can see, business requirements must support stakeholder requirements. And essentially, stakeholder requirements is describing the needs of stakeholders that must be met in order to achieve the business requirements. For example, it can be such as, we would like to have a mechanism to monitor the response time for each and every vendor process on a daily basis in order to reduce the lead time. The report should be generated daily, monthly, or on ad hoc basis in order to monitor this trend. So there can be various types of stakeholder requirements, but it is important to remember that business requirements must support stakeholder requirements and stakeholder requirements are achieved by business requirements in this in this cycle, okay? The next one, we're gonna move on to um, business rules. So business rules are policies that direct and constrain the organization. So it can include um, different types of policies, calculations, authorizations, limitations, any triggers or constraints. So these business rules actually directly influence um, solution requirements. So when you're trying to come up with solution requirements or when you're brainstorming for ideas for your solution requirements, you have to take business rules into account because there might be some 
functional or non-functional requirements that may have to be tweaked a little bit or changed in order to accommodate business rules. So solution requirements refer to the expected features and behavior of the system or product. It describes the capabilities and qualities of a solution that meets the stakeholder requirements. They provide the appropriate level of detail to allow for the development and implementation of the solutions. So as I mentioned before, there are two main types of solution requirements, which are functional and non-functional. So the functional requirements are what's expected features of the system or a product. So it could be things like registering a new user, making a bid online using vendor self-service, and being able to print various types of reports, etc. But as you can see, um, it could be a list of anything because Functional requirements essentially refer to the question of what must the solution do? So if there is any specific feature or enhancement that you're looking for in this specific product, then you have to make sure to capture them. On the other hand, non-functional requirements are the requirements which are related to the behavior of the system. So conditions of the environment in which the solution must operate. So this includes privacy, compliance, security and access, documentation, usability and traceability, accessibility. Um, some of the examples could be every page should load in five to 10 seconds or how often the information is going to be saved when a new vendor enrolls uh, or data security. So any of these requirements can be classified as non-functional requirements under the solution requirements. Last but not least, we have transition requirements. So these are unique in nature because they describe the capabilities that the solution must have and the conditions the solutions must meet in order to facilitate transition from current state to the future state. So it's only going to be available for the interim period. But once the change is complete, then it's no longer going to be needed. So it's very temporary in nature. Examples are things like user cheat sheet, um, data migration from old system to the new system. So these are transition requirements that must be thought of or prepared before we have or implement a new process or a new change. But once users become familiar with the system, they no longer one day will going to require cheat sheets, right? Because they're going to be accustomed to the new system. Uh, and the same thing with data migration. Once you move data migration from an old system to the new system, then you're not going to require this data migration because everyone's going to adopt the new system and they're going to input the data in the new system. So this is why these two examples are good transition requirements. So I wanted to share this one page of diagram with you because these are some of the models or diagrams that business analysts can use in order to help throughout the process of business analysis as well as capturing requirements. So once we gather requirements, we can often put them into different diagrams in order to help us with our understanding and confirm that we have we have a pretty solid understanding of what the requirements are. So under the solution scope, I am most familiar with business process model and use case, use case diagram. So I'm going to, in a follow up meeting, I'm going to talk about business process model specifically because there are just so many different aspects that I, I want to include in the follow up video. But I just wanted to give you a sense that throughout this requirements phase, there are so many different types of diagrams that you can utilize and um, things like user personas, user stories, workflow model, um, wireframes reports, uh, non-functional requirements, functional requirements. These are all the techniques and diagrams that you can utilize in order to help you 
solidify your understanding of the requirements in order to minimize the gap between your understanding and what the business expects in the future. So in so I'm not going to go into details about what these diagrams or techniques are in today's video. I, I just don't have enough time to go over everything here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand pick some of these diagrams and then we're going to do a deep dive in the follow up videos. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys found it useful. Any, and if you guys have any specific questions, please feel free to comment below and and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.